Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus chapter 26, and we're looking at verses 7 through 14 today. We're talking about the materials that, that compose the sealing of the tabernacle or the sanctuary. Let me read them out quickly for us. Then you shall make curtains of goats hair for a tent over the tabernacle. You shall make 11 curtains in all. The length of each curtain shall be 30 cubits, and the width of each curtain 4 cubits. And 11 curtains shall have the same measurements. You shall join five curtains by themselves, and the other six curtains by themselves. You shall double over the sixth curtain at the front of the tent. You shall make 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the first set, and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the second set. You shall make 50 clasps of bronze, and you shall put the clasps into the loops and join the tent together so that it will be a unit. The overlapping part that is left over in the curtains of the tent, that half curtain that is left over, shall lap over the back of the tabernacle, the cubit on the one side and the cubit on the other, of what is left over in the length of the curtains and of the tent, shall lap over the sides of the tabernacle on the one side and on the other to cover it. You shall make a covering for the tent of ram's skins dyed red and a covering of porpoise skins above. So we have four layers here in the ceiling, and uh, we have the the ones, the outermost skins have the lowest quality metals. You know, the innermost is, has golden clasps. The outer, well, outermost have less valuable metals. The outermost skins and things are like able to repel water, whereas the innermost uh, would absorb water. So it's definitely arranged in a certain pattern, a certain, with a certain plan. So why were these coverings, it says, why were they dyed red? Or were they just tanned because they were just uh, leather, leatherish prepared there because of the, the color. Now here's an issue we get into here and that, um, and I've heard a lot of people get into this, and they take every single piece in the sanctuary, every little can bolt and nut, every little, every, every item, every color, every which thing, every piece, and everything to everything they assign a very special, very particular symbolic value, you know, and it's all over the place, like this means this, this means this, this means this, this means this. What's interesting is we look at the actual text, the actual scripture, many times uh, it's clear that these things have a symbolic uh, meaning, but it's not presented to us the depth of meaning or the specifics of the symbolic meaning of that item. So we're left to infer, we're left to uh, compare scripture with scripture, and we're left to be, use our common sense and not go too far and, and not ignore that it's put there, but also not to take it and overdo it. If you take everything and make every nut and bolt and every screw and every rivet and every, you know, every element, every element without fail, every piece, you make it all have some kind of deep symbolic meaning and you're out here declaring, oh, the red means this and the blue means that and the white means this. You know, a lot of that is, is some of it may be valid, but a lot of it is uh, just somebody just spouting. They're just saying, well, it means this. Well, it may not mean that. So, and again, if some of the instructions, some of the very details were given in a, in a more uh, unique way, as we've noticed the last couple of days, like maybe the exact things wasn't, but Moses showed them what it would be then is it wise to try to make every single thing stand up, like every single piece down to the, some of this may simply be functional. Do you think that there's a, that everything there was the way it was because it's exactly that way in heaven? Do they, are they using goat's hair in the heavenly space? Uh, these things are representing and they're able to use the things that they have available to them. So yeah, I think that we've got to be careful before pushing every element and making it all into some kind of a prophecy. Every last piece, every detail, yes, we want to know. Yes, we're interested. Yes, we, we don't want to miss insights that the Bible has for us. But we don't want to add to God's word. We don't want to be guilty of, of uh, throwing our opinions into the cup and, and stirring it out and, and, and presenting that as truth. Maybe it has this meaning, but maybe it's just red because it was tanned. So uh, let's be careful with that here as we are looking at the meanings. And you, so, you know, I know some people might tune in here and they're gonna say, oh, here's some more stuff in the sanctuary. I'm trying to gather every piece of information I have. I'm gonna go and listen to, to uh, Pastor Larry. He's gonna give us all the details of what all this stuff means. You may be disappointed because you may say, well, he didn't tell us that the blue meant this and the red meant that, and uh, he's, he's too restrained. Uh, well, I am going to be careful because this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. It's not the Word of Larry. This is not 
we need to let God be God, and unless he tells us to push every single thing through a sieve and, and make an allegorical meaning to every which thing out there, we're pretty on pretty dangerous ground to push it that hard. So let's let the text say what the text says, and we'll be more careful in, in separating between what the text literally says and our ideas about what we believe the text means. I'm not saying that some of these things aren't without meaning, but I'm going to approach them with just a little bit more caution uh, so that we can make sure that we are following out what the Bible says. And we're not just generating chaos and, and weirdness that isn't what the Bible says or suggests at all. Fair enough. I just want to point out that Stuart, the scholar who wrote this commentary, and he knows more about it than I do, and he knows more about it perhaps than you do, he says that the coverings had no symbolic significance and they were purely functional as a protection from the elements. So is that true? Is that not true? I'm not completely sure, but I want to take that as a very serious option that at some, in some respects, these are a functional business. It may not be that significant that there's 11 pillars here or five pillars there. Let's not try to make everything stand on its head. Let's let God tell us what things mean what things. And we'll be in a better space to really understand the sanctuary as he's giving it. You have a beautiful day. Thank you.